Welcome to this week's Seven Days of Science. It's Ben again this time, since Doug is not dead but currently in Germany. Anyway, since he's not here, we can finally do this intro without it cutting off. Starting this week with some slightly depressing news, a new study has analysed the effects a chytrid fungus disease has had on global amphibian populations. This fungus species, first identified in populations around 20 years ago, has been wreaking havoc on these animals ever since. The study found that declines in amphibian numbers have occurred all over the world, except in Asia where the fungus originated and species are therefore resistant to it. Transport of species by humans is a major contributor to this issue, as the disease is able to spread even further, and looking back at the last 50 years, the researchers have shown that at least 500 species of amphibian have declined due to this disease, with 90 presumed extinctions. As a result, this epidemic has been labelled as the greatest loss of biodiversity due to a disease in recorded history. The paper also suggests some steps that need to be taken to reduce the future impact of the disease, such as improved wildlife trade regulations. Kicking off this week's round of paleontology news, we welcome a brand new species of mastodon. The paper naming the new species explains how before now it was thought that only a single highly variable species of mastodon existed in the Pleistocene of North America, Mammoth americanum. However, based on specimens unearthed throughout California and from two sites in Idaho, a second species is now officially recognised, Mammoth pacificus. This form is distinct from the other in a number of characteristics, including tooth shape, the number of vertebrae, and the fact that this species did not have mandibular tusks during any part of its life. The paper also explains how all the mastodon remains from California in fact belong to M. pacificus, showing that M. americanum was not actually present in this state. Next up, a new genus and species of basal titanosaur has been named this week, and what a name it is. Almost as if the authors had seen Thanos and thought they could do one better, this new sauropod has been named Kaiju Titan Maui. In the paper, the authors explain how kaiju comes from the Japanese word for strange beast or monster, and titan is the Greek for giant. The species name is then apparently named for the acronym of the museum in Argentina where the fossils were kept. This dinosaur is described as possessing neck vertebrae near the head that have bifid neural spines, a characteristic that seems to have evolved on several occasions in this group. The discovery also indicates that both basal titanosaurs and more advanced titanosaurs existed at the same time during the late Cretaceous. Also this week, the first occurrence of an arctic lambiosaurine has been reported. Hailing from the Prince Creek Formation in Alaska, which includes rocks of late Cretaceous age, this discovery indicates that the crest-lacking hadrosaurines were not the only hadrosaurids to live here. Crested lambiosaurines lived in this arctic environment too, further supporting the idea that a faunal interchange between this region and lower latitudes occurred in the past, and possibly indicates that lambiosaurines generally favoured more inland areas compared to hadrosaurines. Also worth mentioning is this paper reporting a deposit attributable to within an hour after the meteor impact that ended the non-avian dinosaurs. However, some very strange things have happened with that paper, such as the authors releasing details to the media before the paper was even published, and apparently exaggerating some of the findings. I'll link to a Twitter thread explaining the situation, but this paper has been pretty controversial and it's probably best to not go into too much detail at the risk of spreading misinformation. And that's the end for this week's 7 Days of Science. I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did feel free to subscribe if you want to, and we'll see you on Sunday for the epic conclusion to the history of speculative zoology.